Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm Will. This is the podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons and Dragons, from lightweight lances to vengeful villains. And today we're talking about Loxodons and Vidalkin. Hey, Brian. Hey, Will. How are you doing today? I'm wonderful. Yeah? Yes. And, well, today we are doing something that's maybe a little long overdue. Today we are covering some lore from the setting of Ravnica. Dang. <laughs> now, hey, this, wait, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. Is your back okay? My back's okay. I hurt my back Carrying uh, what, this podcast. a week and a half. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> no, I hurt my back like a week and a half ago, but it's recovering pretty well. Okay. Um, so this uh, Ravnica was the first official... Uh, Magic the Gathering plane turned into a D&D campaign setting back in the November of 2018. Uh, Ravnica is a very unique setting set in a megalopolis, which is one of my favorite new words. Megalopolis. Uh, a megalopolis, a near endless cityscape making up the entire world. It is a setting of laws, order, urban exploration, and organizations. The entire world is dominated by the ten major guilds of Ravnica, each playing its part in keeping the city together and running uh, while also vying for control and territory from the other nine. We will touch on a few of these guilds today between the two races that we're covering. And before we get into Loxodons or Vildalkin, I will give a brief overview of the guilds that are pertinent to the lore of these races. Okay, I'm excited to find out more about these things. <laughs> so the... See, is the, it, it's Vedalkin, right? Not, Vidal- Vidal- not Veldalkin. Did I say Veldalkin again? Yeah, because here it's it Vidalkin. says Veldalkin. Okay, it's Vedalkin. Sorry, sorry for my, my mispronunciation. I deleted that. The... Um, the organizations or the guilds that we're going to be covering today are as follows. We're going to be covering the Selesnia Sele- Conclave, the Orzov Syndicate, the Azorius Senate, the Simic Combine, and the Izzet League. The Izzet League. So, That's my favorite soccer club. <laughs> football club. Sorry. Um, let's, let's go through each of these. So the Selesnia Conclave, uh, like a thriving garden carefully tended and abundantly fertile, the communities of the Selesnia... Silesi- oh, man, this word's going to kill me. Selesnia Conclave are a harmonious union of nature and civilization. The Selesnia Conclave. The it's me- like a spa, a spa there commercial. There we go. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> Welcome to the Selesnia Conclave. <laughs> the members of the Conclave dream of embracing all of Rag- Ravnica in their peaceful union. In the meantime, they are growing an army preparing to resist the ambition and destructive impulses of the other guilds and fight to defend their way of life. The original mission of the Conclave involved conservation and charity, but its focus has long been on expanding its community in which all members are cared for and nature is preserved in harmony with civilization. So the Selesnia Conclave is like the the Druidic guild of the city. Yeah. Um, Ravnik is an interesting interesting setting because this is a super mega giant city but i would imagine there are large swaths of nature like almost like central park type lo- locations oh yeah sure like within the city the and wilds between yeah okay um so kind of it, it's one big city it's one big city and there's 12 like mini organizations trying to like kill i think each it's other? 10 10, I think it's 10, 10 organizations. organizations it's 12 in eberron right 12, 12 marks. yeah the 12 houses yeah. yeah so there are 10 guilds in ravnica and they run the city they're like the powers that be and they they keep things under control. They keep things organized. They work together, but they're also also like always politically vying against each other. Right. Sometimes okay. like overtly, and sometimes covertly. So this one is like we need to build an army because the other guilds suck. Or we'll get stomped out. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. right. So next, we're going to talk about the Orzov Syndicate. The or the Orzov's original function was both religious and financial, with the two functions closely related. As Ravnica's dominant church, the Orzov continues to preach an oppressive message that equates sin with debt and promises forgivenesses, forgiveness to those who make tithes and donations. As Ravnica's principal bank, it stores and secures the riches of the city, collecting the rest at high rates to expand its own wealth. Its members truly believe that their work is necessary to proper functioning of Ravnica, although most other Ravnicans see the Orzov as for the corrupt organization it is. Many people are still dazzled by the syndicate's promises of wealth, prestige, and longevity. So it's a, it's a mega church. If you're poor, you're going to hell. Yeah. And also, uh, give us all your cash to hold. <laughs> and, like, so if you're the other guilds, you're like not interested in putting your money with this bank. Because you but know, you, but you, know you also don't have a no choice. Kid. It's the bank. Oh, damn. they are the bank of the city. This, that's so powerful, though. Yeah, it okay. is. It's extremely powerful. Um, so it's a, it's a mega church with prosperity gospel. That's what the Orzov Syndicate is. Right, okay. Next, we have the Azorius Senate. Uh, bringing order from chaos, that is the mission of the Azorius Senate. Without the extensive legal code crafted and enforced by the Azorius, society would crumble. Azorius carried this weight 
weighty responsibility with stoic pride, and they perform their work of legislation, investigation, and enforcement with steely determination. So these, this, the Senate has power. This is actually like a, a governmental system. Yeah, okay. Like they have the power to legislate laws into existence, and apparently they're also the, um, the executive branch. They have the power of investigation and enforcement. So they're the police, and they are the... Um, the legislative branch, the the Senate. Okay, as so said. we control written government. Yeah, you control and the banks, we, and we have the, the bodies to enforce it. You control, <laughs> you control the trees. It's like fuck, we need to build an army. What are you gonna do without your apples? <laughs> huh? We got them. That's all, actually baby. true. They have food source. Yeah. Like, where else? Where else are you getting food source in a city? Maybe a far, Yeah, like they they don't just control like the jets like belittling. Yeah. It, maybe what are you gonna do trees, without your like, apples? How about like farmland and stuff? Right. Know, like agriculture. Exactly. Okay. Big so next, farmer. next we're gonna talk about the Simic Combine. Um, the secrets of life are revealed in the laboratories of the Simic, and the research notes plumb and catalog nature's wonders. The original mission was to oversee issues of public health, but the Simic came to believe that complete health of individuals and of society as a whole depends on the mutual adaptation of nature and civilization to one another. Thus, biological experimentation has always been among its primary concerns. Oh, boy. So that this started bad. as the health department. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then quickly. we started fusing people with cats. <laughs> That's pretty much exactly it. Then they started fusing people with animals. What if everyone fell on their feet every time they <laughs> fell? We can make it happen. That's we hilarious. can build them better. So um, the technology. it does continue to be a like um, a CDC, if you will. But okay. It, it doubles as an evil mad scientist organization. Yeah, they're also like up in Bah Bahamut's business. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I almost said Bahamut. Wrong guy. <laughs> wrong, wrong dude. Um, Finally, the final guild that's pertinent to these two races is the Izzet League. The Izzet are obsessive experimenters combining a keen creative intellect with a short attention span. The original mandate of the Izzet Guild was to provide solutions for public work projects such as sewers, boilers, and roadways. But their increasingly far-fetched experiments satisfy only their insatiable curiosity. Sometimes their experiments yield useful technolo technological advancements. Other times they produce unintended mana geysers, spatial rifts, <laughs> arc arcane portals, and huge explosions all over which can be useful in their own way. So this is like um, like a weird mix of like tech advancement and infrastructure. Yeah, well, this but is why your roads aren't getting fixed. <laughs> the fucking potholes are still on the main thoroughfare because they're opening up a fucking black Spatial hole rift. downtown. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, as you can, as is obvious, uh, as much as the guilds do keep the city together, it's very dysfunctional, and I could see Ravnica going very dystopic very quickly. Yeah, sure. Maybe that like. You, you jump in and some adventurers are the like the tipping point to make chaos and yeah two. yeah absolutely so and honestly this is only what five there's another five and some of them are really bad dude but we're not going to talk about them today okay um now we're going to talk about the first of the two races from this setting uh the loxodons yeah i was like we're we're doing a race episode yeah this right? is a <laughs> okay. double race episode we're doing two races um both are ravnica specific so Loxodons first. The humanoid elephants called Loxodons are often oases of calm in the busy streets of Ravnica. They hum or chant in sonorous tones and move slowly or sit in perfect stillness. If provoked to action, Loxodons are true terrors, bellowing with rage, trumpeting and flapping their ears. Their serene wisdom, fierce loyalty, and unwavering conviction are tre tremendous assets to their guilt. Excuse me. So Loxodons tower above most other humanoids, standing over seven feet tall. They have the head trunks, tusks, ears, and faces of elephants, and hulking bi bipedal bodies covered in thick, leathery skin. Each of their hands has four thick digits, and their feet are the flat-bottomed, oval-shaped feet of elephants. Mm. Like that of an elephant, a loxodon's trunk is a useful appendage, in addition to providing a keen sense of smell. The trunk can be used to lift and carry even heavy objects. The trunk can be used to carry both food and liquid to the mouth, and can even act as a snorkel. That's cool. So, I should have looked this up, but like, I understand that, like, we've probably given Loxodons a keen sense of smell because they have a very prominent nose. But, like, do elephants actually have a keen sense of smell? Um, let me Google it. I'm very curious. I'm going like, Google it. Yeah. I, I mean, would imagine they probably do, but I don't know that for fact. Do so, elephants like, smell good? That's not the right. <laughs> do elephants do, have do elephants a good got that sense good, good of smell. smell? Do their nose work right? <laughs> All about elephant senses. Yeah, elephants, elephants have, have a keen, keen sense, sense of smell. smell. All right. 
Answer. Detecting water sources up to 19.2 kilometers away. Please convert 5th edition to the metric system. There it is. Yeah. All right, so Loxodons are tireless, patient artisans with an unrivaled intuition about their craft. Although they make nurturing spiritual leaders, their gift for stonework is so ingrained that they are often at a loss when they try to impart that knowledge to others. It's interesting. I feel like stone giants kind of have that problem, too. It's like yeah. you, just, you just do it. <laughs> like they don't understand. I saw the angel in the marble. <laughs> I carved until it was free. There, exactly yeah. that. Among the Selesnia, it primarily falls to Loxodons to build the guild's magnificent cathedral-like arboretum structures. Nice. So, Loxodon. It's pretty obvious. They're like this weird mix of like dwarf and elf, like spiritualism. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got a bit of nature. We got a lot of stone crafting, and yeah, they're very much um, attracted to the Selesnia um, conclave. Okay. Sweet. So Loxodons believe in the value of community in life and thus are most often found in the Selesnia Conclave. Some find fulfillment in the cause of order by joining the Orzov Syndicate or the Azorius Senate. Loxodons believe that the members of a group have a responsibility to look out for each other. Once they have joined a guild or bonded with other individuals in any capacity, Loxodons devote themselves to maintaining that bond. They coordinate their efforts and are often willing to sacrifice themselves for the sake of the group. And that's obviously taken for elephants. Elephants are very uh, family-oriented. They stick together. Very cleric-y. Yeah, very cleric-y, very very lawful, very Uh almost like... You could even go paladin with this. Can you imagine this elephant paladin? That'd be scary as fuck. Holy shit. Yeah, that is scary. (laughs) Also, also, like, an elephant ranger would be cool. That would be super dope, yeah. You can can fucking... You know where there's water for 19.2 kilometers. That's very fucking true. 12 miles. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) They expect reciprocal loyalty and commitment from the other members of their communities. It can be severe in their disappointment when their trust is betrayed. Um, the primary difference between Loxodons who join different guilds is their sense of the size of the community they belong to. Mm, can you imagine getting that look from the fucking elephant man? It's like, <laughs> Where were you, bro? Where were you? You know, I just expected a little more of you. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. I'm not mad. Look, let's just let's just move on from this, okay? I, you know what? I'm going to bed. <laughs> For Loxodons, in yes, the- on the couch. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. For Loxodons in the Selesnia Conclave, their community is the world and all living beings in it. Every, Yeah, their community is the world and all living beings in it. So, like, they have, they're very loyal and they're very bonded and connected. But outside of their sphere, like, the rest of the world might as well not exist. Okay. Like, this is their world and all the living beings in it. And they're, these are the things they care about. I'm just worried about and my little bubble. They don't have a scope beyond that. Okay. So, everything valuable meant to live in harmony. And interdependent. For Azorius Loxodons, community primarily means a society of different peoples who need adherence to law and order so they can function together. For those in the Orzov Syndicate, community means a syndicate alone with its interests taking priority over those of any other group. Um, so, yeah, again, limited scope. Yeah. Uh, a Loxodon's name includes subtle tones produced in a Loxodon's resonant nasal chambers that indicate status, family connection, and community role. Since most non Loxodons can't distinguish these underlying tones, let alone produce them, Loxodons often translate them into titles such as uh, Hierarch, Reverend, Grandmother, Healer, or Saint. Uh, oh, when sure. you're acting with other races. Now, that's fucking cool. You, like, you cool. just get to give a free title to your character. You get uh, low-frequency tones. Yeah, you, know, that's you get really access dope. to making, like, really long-form waves that can be heard up to, like, my, for my, I think they can call out for, like, miles away with that That's shit. really cool. They can hear tsunamis coming because they make a... They make a low enough frequency rumble like humans can't oh, detect it. Oh, and they can it, detect and elephants it can. with their big ass so ears. If you, see, if you see Loxodons running inland, follow them. Yeah, follow them. Follow indeed. them, my guy. Have you ever played a game called Mass Effect? Uh, no, but like I spiritually understand Mass Effect. Okay, and, well, what I, it is to I, me. I am vaguely familiar with the franchise, but there is a race of aliens in Mass Effect. I wouldn't say they're exactly elephant-like, but they're big and bulky, and they have like elephant-like legs. Mm-hmm. But they have—they don't use inflection of voice uh, oh. when they comes to speaking. So they they speak have in a monotone sort of way. Yeah, they have a complicated uh, way of expressing their emotion. Yeah, those guys—they have a complicated way of uh, expressing their emotions via scent. I think it is. Oh. And because other like being troglodyte. Um, I don't remember troglodytes. Like uh, this is so. This are is just stink monsters. I'm pulling this knowledge out of like. Me watching my ex girlfriend play twelve years ago. So oh wow, <laughs> I'm doing my best here. I, it's either scent pull. or that or their their intonations are so subtle that the other races can't pick it up. So the way they speak is they will say something and then they will say the emotion that they're feeling. So they'll be like, blah 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 blah, rage, blah 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 blah, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. disappointment. 
It's it's really funny, but also I really like that race, <laughs> and that's what the loxodons remind me of with these with these tones other people can't blah, blah, uh, blah. detect. Eight. Heart emoji. Yeah, there we <laughs> go. <laughs> exactly. That's good. So um, so that's all I got on loxodons. Before you read off uh, all their wonderful stats. Okay. Um, you got any questions? Um, what were their what were their like physical traits? Like, is that what I'm I'm gonna read? Like how exactly how tall they are and stuff um, like that. So like they have they essentially. Uh, have the head of an elephant, yeah, on a bulky humanoid body with leathery elephant fingies. skin, four digit fingies, and elephant legs. Yeah, so just they're just tree chunking around. So they're yeah. they're bipedaling, long nose elephant guy. That's, that's yeah, pretty, pretty much they're elephant okay. people. Yeah, yeah. All right. So what do you got? Um, no, that's I'm good. We can take a break. Are okay, taking a break. No, no, you were gonna read the loxodon traits. Oh, I thought we were gonna take a break. My bad, <laughs> no. dude. You're good. In like a month. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> Yeah, okay, Loxodon. Your Loxodon character has the following racial traits. Ability score increase. Your constitution score increases by two. And your wisdom score increases by one. Age. Loxodons physically mature at the same rate as humans. But they live <coughs> to be about 450 years old. That's, that's cool. a nice amount of time. Is that like Fear Bulg? Um, yeah, that's like and Saga? Dwarf and Fear Bulg. Dwarf, it's like, it's like in between the two. Okay. They highly value the weight of wisdom and experience and are considered young until they reach the age of 60. I believe for elves it's like 100. Yeah. Uh, alignment. Most Loxodons are lawful, believing in the value of a peaceful, ordered life. They also tend toward good. Yeah, yeah we kind of They're like community-based creatures. Yeah. They are going to value family. Apparently they value others and others like well-being. Community. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> size. Loxodons stand between 7 and 8 feet tall, which is like one of the tallest races should be, right? Pretty much. That's the size of Goliaths. Yeah. Goliaths, I think, are in the seven. Yeah, seven, eight. Yeah. Their massive bodies weigh between three and 400 pounds. Your size is medium. Bullshit. Um, <laughs> they're yeah, huge. You know. I'm sorry. They're fucking huge. I, if you slap this thing in a five, I think this thing fits in a five foot cube standing up. Just barely. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Powerful build. You count as one size larger when determining your carrying capacity and the weight you can push, drag, or lift. That's generally what they've been doing with races that kind of should be large. Bugbears, um, Goliaths, um, Centaurs can't. Centaurs do that. Can they have do the that? powerful build as well. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's what they're doing with these. It works. I think it's fine. Yeah, um, we can't make you ten feet take up ten feet, but we can make you act like you take up ten feet. Right, exactly. Uh, sometimes. So powerful build. We just did that. Speed. Your base walking speed is thirty feet. Um, yeah, okay. They're tall. Uh, locks it on Serenity. You have advantage on saving throws against being charmed or frightened. That's I find that cool. interesting. I'm just too chill. You can't fucking... I'm too you, wise. You can't scare me. <laughs> Natural armor. You have thick, leathery skin. When you aren't wearing armor, your AC is 12 plus your constitution modifier. That's dope. <laughs> you can use your natural armor to determine your AC if the armor you wear would leave you with a lower AC. Oh, cool. Okay. Exactly. A shield's benefit applies normal while you use your natural armor. Also cool. Yeah, so a, a cloth-wearing wizard. This is good for wizards because wizards don't get light armor. They get right, nothing. Okay, yeah. So this gives them that, that extra two. Like how you would do like it studded with leather. a turtle to have like a high AC. Yeah, turtles make great wizards because of that awesome AC that they just get built in. Yes. But, um, yeah. All right, trunk. You can grasp things with your trunk, and you can use it as a snorkel. It has a reach of five feet, and it can lift a number of pounds equal to five times your strength score. You can use it to do the following simple tasks. Lift, drop, hold, push, or pull an object or a creature. Uh, this is a cool Daft Punk song. <laughs> Open or close a door or a container. <laughs> grapple someone or make an unarmed strike. Your DM might allow other simple tasks to be added to that list of options. So this is like Mage Hand almost, but kind of. But like you know, it's attached to your face and yeah. uh, <laughs> a big difference a big between difference. that and Mage Hand. It's an extra hand, yeah. and like I understand that it needs to be a feature because I mean it's pretty cool. But it's not as cool as, like, a prehensile tail, which is more sneaky. Yeah, sure. But, I mean, it's a thing. Cool. Your trunk can't wield weapons or shields or do anything that requires manual precision. This is bullshit because I've seen elephants paint, and they <laughs> paint beautifully. Such as using tools or magic items or performing the somatic components of a spell. Okay, I get that. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't fucking weave magic signs well, with Well, that, face. and they don't want you to, like, triple wield. You know, yeah, swords. Yeah, sure. Like, with sword, sword, sword. Man, you're gonna... <sighs> what if I build... A loxodon rogue, and I want to shoot blow darts out of my trunk. 
I mean, as a, as a DM, I would help you make that happen. But okay, that's it's not, see, that's it's not I, rules is wit. Written. That's what I would expect yeah, though. Like, yeah. it's practical to do that. Yeah, it's sure, just, absolutely. I have a little thing that loads into my nostrils. And Ab- it's absolutely. got some preset darts in there. I just sneeze, and you're dead. There you go. Or poisoned or worse. It's keen smell, thanks to your sensitive trunk. You have advantage on wisdom, perception, wisdom, survival, and intelligence, investigation. Checks that involve smell. Languages you can speak, read, and write common and loxodon. Yeah, so there it is. Yeah. They're a pretty well-rounded race. I think uh, if we're talking like uh, uh, mechanically like optimal uh, stuff, their natural armor is one of their better ones. Powerful build can be cool. This is a good um, candidate for a character that you don't want to die, like in the early game. Yeah, you know that plus I mean? two to con's nice because it's good. That's good for any class. Yeah, that I mean, that's a <clears throat> high con character is a good first pick yeah. for a brand new player. And the wisdom lends itself, of course, to cleric and druid. That's obvious. I, or monk. A monk is is a good decision as well. Or that's right. ranger maybe. Um, if we're again, if we're just looking at being optimal, which I don't tend to, but you know, some people do. Loxodon favorite terrain desert, looking just. That'd so be cross cool. the Sahara with my child. Yeah, sure. Surviving with the yeah. pod. Looking for sharing water holes with lions. Let's take a short rest. <laughs> uh, what's the lion one? Uh, Leonin. Oh, Leonin. We're sharing Leonin water holes with Leonin. Let's yeah. take a short rest. <laughs> All right, we're back. Indeed we are. And we're talking about Vidalkin. Not Veldalkin. Vidalkin. Vidalkin. That's so Brian, like a Street Fighter 2 like, projectile like cry. Vidalkin. Vidalkin. Yeah. <laughs> So Brian, nothing is perfect. Um, Vidalkin no, not no, only it's not. Vidalkin not only believe this fact, they rejoice in it. Oh shit! Every imperfection is a chance for improvement, and progress is an endless march toward a state of perfection that can never be reached. That them loving you is like a backhanded compliment. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> this viewpoint leads Vidalkin to pursue their work with delighted enthusiasm, never deterred by setbacks, and excited by every opportunity to improve of Im- for improvement. Vidalkin are tall and slender, standing almost a head taller than humans on average, but weighing about the same. <clears throat> Their hairless skin comes in a range of shades of blue. Their eyes are darker shades of blue or violet. They lack external ears. Their noses are broad and flat, and they're partially amphibious. Okay. And they're I like great at basketball because they're so tall. I guess so, yeah, sure. Yeah, whether well, they like six four, six five, probably. Yeah, they're they're up there, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I just like their their general disposition. Like that idea of like uh you know, there's always a way to improve yourself, and like that's something to be excited about. Yeah, to find your imperfections is an opportunity. Yeah, that's really cool. I had a job that called them opportunities when you fucked up. Oh my Jesus! That's we have a an opportunity. To that's a discuss, nightmare. Brian. That's a <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, that's Despite a bad job. being talkative, uh, Vidalkin keep their personal lives private, and they tend to engage more with ideas than with people. I like these guys more with every sentence yeah, I read. Yeah, great. They form close fr- friendships based on mutual interests or compelling disagreements, and their interactions dwell on their thoughts about those issues rather than their feelings about them. To members of other races, Vidalkin often seem cold, even emotionless. That assessment isn't fair, though. They feel emotion every bit as intensely as other folk do, but they are skilled at not displaying it. Cool rationality oh. guides their actions. They make and follow careful plans, and they are patient enough to do nothing when the ideal outcome relies on such interac- inaction. These are interesting. Yeah, I like they're them. They're super interesting. They're very, uh, they're intellectuals, very rational, um, but not emotionless. Like they're not mad scientists. You know, they're not uh, psychopaths, but uh, you know, they're very smart. Yeah, they're not sociopaths or anything like that. Yeah. So ours are darker shades of blue or white. They lack external ears and nose are broad and flat. Did they're, you want to pull up a picture? They're partially of amphibious. Okay, okay, that was the part. I was like, are these water folk? Like, not yeah, necessarily. Kind of, but not necessarily. No. Okay. Um, Their curious yeah. intellects and rational minds incline Vidalkin towards membership in the Azorius Senate, the Simic Combine, and less often the Izzet League. I wonder why less often the Izzet League. Probably because the Izzet League is more destructive with their experimentations, while the Simic Combine is more biological. So, yeah, okay. I can see that. So what is this chick's name in Marvel? <laughs> um, oh, you're talking about Nebula? Nebula. That's a really cool. These are really cool images. Yeah, they are. That we, we, we should maybe start putting up as we're looking at them I'll for the I'll, YouTube. I'll, that's up to you, man. I'll think about it. That's your, yeah, that's your <laughs> field. Okay, so they're curious. Oh, yeah, so Azuri Senate, Simic Combine, and sometimes the Izzet League are the guilds that they're attracted to. Whatever their guild affiliation, they put their intelligence to use in crafting and improving things. Whether those things are laws, procedures, or magical sciences, it all can believe that the path toward the impossible goal of perfection is paved with bricks of education, careful deliberation, and controlled experimentation. 
Some of it all can direct their energy toward perfecting themselves, whether by means of simic bioengineering or through extensive study, and others concentrate on perfecting society through the careful drafting and application of laws. I really like these guys. Yeah, this they're is just great. they're very fun, and they're they're kind of inspiring. I like I I would definitely want to be more like them in their their perception of like how to be. I like the long play you can do on like a camp of like a long form campaign with this guy. Like yeah. you don't know what's up with this fool at first and then like over time they just like get better and better at like the shit they suck at. <laughs> sure. You know, like <laughs> it's good. Like they're constantly trying to improve. Yeah, sucking at something is the first step to being kind of good at something. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> All right, uh, Brian. Any questions about Vidalkin before you read off their traits? No, this is this is fun. I would like to play one of these for yeah. sure. Let see what that's it. like. Um, Vidalkin traits. Your Vidalkin character has the following racial traits: ability score increase. Your intelligence score increases by two, and your wisdom score increases by one. Cool. Very wizardly. Uh, age. Vidalkin matures slower than humans do, reaching maturity around age forty. Their lifespan is typically 350 years, with some living to the age of 500. So more dwarven. Yeah. A little on the long side. Alignment. The Dalkin are usually lawful and non-evil. Okay. Um, so lawful neutral and lawful good. Yeah, much. I get a neutral feel from them. I get a lot of lawful neutralness from them. Nice. Okay. Size. Tall and slender. The Dalkin stand 6 to 6, 1. Uh, 61? <laughs> that can't be right. Six to like six. I imagine it's six to six, seven. It's pro yeah, six to seven feet tall, somewhere in that ballpark, because mm -hmm. they're a head a head taller than most humans, and humans are like what five ten average. I think the yeah, the around there, five ten, like five eleven, yeah, maybe a little shorter. Feet. Uh, so they're six to seven feet tall on average. They usually weigh less than two hundred pounds. Their size is medium. Yeah, Base walking slender. speed is thirty feet. Um, who's got thirty five? The centaur. Um, elves do. Uh, centaur have forty. Why do elves have thirty five? The wood elf. I think elf, the right? wood elf does. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Dalkin dispassion. You have advantage on all intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. That's so good. Because <laughs> they're so smart. This intelligence one is like almost moot, but the wisdom yeah. and charisma ones are great. But when it comes up, it's and when it comes nice. up, you got it. Yeah. Because yeah. whenever you do have to make one, it's usually pretty bad. Yeah. And there is a lot goes. more psychic stuff coming out. There so is. That's true. That, that's that's nice. Tireless precision. You are proficient in one of the following skills of your choice. Arcana, history, investigation, medicine, performance, or sleight of hand. You are also proficient with one tool of your choice. Whenever you make an ability check with the chosen skill or tool, roll a d4 and add the number rolled to the check's total. So I've talked about this multiple times when we cover certain races. I'm never really a fan of a race uh, feature that just gives you like, oh, you also have an extra skill in one of these five things because I feel like it's kind of lazy. This one's a little better because you get the skill and you get a tool with an extra d4. So it's got a little more going on and it makes sense because, you know, these guys are brainiacs. Yeah. But there's quite a few races that they've done that where it's like, oh, and also pick one of these four skills. I'm like, ah, that's lazy. To associate in this case the skill with the tool that you pick would be a cool flavor. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, like, hey, I'm trained in Arcana and I can like do magic. I, I don't know. That's probably a bad one. His I also have an alchemist kit that I have yeah, a D four something like extra that. In. Yeah. yeah, or the medicine one is cool. Like, hey, I like I'm looking into like regenerative healing. Yeah, and then here's my healing kit right. that I'm super good with. Here's a drop a dropper, and it's gonna make your skin regrow, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, they're partially ambi amb ambiguous, amphibious. By absorbing oxygen through your skin, you can breathe underwater for up to one hour. Once you finish, once you've reached that limit, you can't use this trait again until you finish a long rest. Languages you can speak, read, and write common, Vidalkin, and one other language of your choice. Neat. I like that. Again, That's the fitting. intelligent, the intelligent species tend to get that extra language, which is fun. So we got a big, chonky family guy, family dude. Family, yes, big and, chonky family guy and a long, and skinny, smart, nerd. smarty pants, super, nerd. super nerd, soup fucking super nerd. nerd. Uh, Vidalkin, again, they, they lend themselves towards um, the wizard with that intelligence or maybe one of the psionic classes when and if those ever come out. Um, I guess the Eldritch Knight because that intelligence boost. That's the thing that's tough about intelligence is there's not a lot of class options that benefit from that and they get a plus two to it. It's just wizard. Yeah, it's just wizard. wizard. Um, does Artifi Artificer too? I think does yeah. intel. That would I would really do an cool Artificer. One. I oh, do an Artificer. Really we should do like an Artificer special, like a... Like a deep dive. I think there's new art artificer stuff in Tasha's. Oh, okay. Well, check do it a out. deep dive. We're getting some requests for that. All right. Any other questions before we get ready for our long rest? I would like to get long. 
Let's do it. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome to the long rest where we get ready for bed. Will, would you like some pillows? Um, yes, I would. Would you like some some blankets? I very much so. Do you would like some some slippies? <sighs> no, I'm okay. He's okay. On I'm okay. You go ahead. You wear the slippies. I'll this wear this. Time. I'll wear this. I like. Slippies. I'm one of those. I'm one of those sleepers who my feet hang out. Oh. Uh, uh, outside the blankets because they get hot. <laughs> yeah, I need that cool air. Sometimes, like I'm in, a the, in the in between times, like right now, I'm sleeping. Uh, no shirt, no shoes, no service, uh, no blank, <laughs> no blanket. Yeah, and, seriously, uh, it's just way too hot. Yeah, it's but, very warm um, out here. But in the winter time, I like to I like to cozy up real snug, real snugly bugly, and we're gonna have a dungeon cast line of of sleepy time stuff for your long rests. Heck yeah, one day, Eventually. not anytime soon, probably. We'll see. We're working on we'll it. We'll work on it. All right, so we're building a beholder. <laughs> yeah, Brian, it's true. Um, I believe we're on feature six. Is mm-hmm. this the sixth feature today? Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. Wait, so seven, seven, eight, nine, seven. Okay, number seven today. So we're getting pretty close to this guy being done. Did we come up with a name yet? Was it the Grick Rancher? Right now, it's just the Grick Rancher. Okay, Rancher um, Grick. Yeah, I think I think Rick the Grick Rancher is a good a good start <laughs> okay, off for dude. that. Let me make that's sure it's the, that's okay. the placeholder. One, two. Three, four, five. We actually only have five. Okay, so it is the sixth one, like I said originally. It is the sixth one, yeah. Okay, so we so have two facts in there. Okay. I will I will do the feature. We're going with the Vidalkin, the, the blue Vidalkin skin. Yeah. This beholder will be blue. Yeah. Um not Gamora, the other one. Nebula. Nebula. Gotcha. Um, Nebula style. Do you want to tell our listeners about this beholder special beam? It's uh this this particular beam including the t- it starts from the tentacle for, uh and it's an elephant trunk, of course, all the yes. way. Uh, and it it um, it does smell good. Yeah, it's got that keen smell. Right, like it doesn't smell good. It smells well. Yeah, it's, it smells it, well. It smells. It's got the well smell. The well smell. Uh, yeah. It can sense uh, water with its nose from up to nineteen point two kilometers away. Also, any strong scent. And any grick. Any grick, because it it's sm- it's it's ranching these grits. It knows all the gricks by name uh-huh. and can smell them from. Pretty much anywhere. Absolutely. Um, so if it loses a grick, then it knows it knows how to how to how to ranch it down. It can go ranch it up, ranch it down, <laughs> ranch it all around. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> so That's the beholder, blue skin and uh, like nebula, yeah, and um, a big elephant trunk for a, a tentacle. So that smells good, and I, it has a and it can load in uh, some dart some darts. Whatever the blow dart stats are. Sure, absolutely. If it needs to turn that that trunk offensive, it can. Yeah, if it has to trank a grick because it's getting out of line, (laughs) it can. (laughs) Absolutely, it can. Fuck yes. Okay, so I I meant to talk to you about this before we recorded, but it's too late for that. But we should ban. Well, we should start a new contest. Fizz ban. In which we're giving away probably what I'm going to think is the the dopest expansion book for a very long time. Dragonlance. Fizz ban's Treasury of Dragons. For those of you who don't know, Fizz ban is a character from the Dragonlance setting. Also, Dungeons and Dragons is a podcast or is a is a game with dragons. Dragons are fucking cool, and this book's all about dragons. Yes, and it's coming out in October. We're getting some expanded Dragonborn stuff because I don't know if you know this about the Dragonborn uh, race from the Player's Handbook. It's kind of underwhelming. It actually doesn't have a lot going on for it. Um, oh, the Dragonborn stuff. The Dragonborn oh, yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, for, for it, the race. it uh, really is underwhelming, and I, they're no they're no fucking elephant person. No, <laughs> definitely not. But uh, Explorer's Guide to Wildmount actually does. Uh, kind of a sub-race thing with them, which is cool. Well, Fizzbands does another sub-race thing with them where you get either chromatic or metallic Dragonborn. Ooh, and okay. they have they have a, a better breath weapon than the Player's Handbook one, but they also have secondary abilities too. So they feel like more on par with the other races. Okay. Um, we're getting gem dragons. We're getting uh, all kinds of new dragon lore. So if you guys want a chance to win this book, um, there's two ways to enter this contest. One is to get on Twitter and share the hashtag DungeonCast. To share your favorite episode of the DungeonCast with the hashtag DungeonCast, and you will be entered to win. Um, you can also win on Instagram, which Brian, how, how are you going to do that on Instagram? Um, I the way we have, I think maybe we'll change it a little bit to k- tweak it. I don't know, to, like optimize the outreach, but. Um, It'll be something along the lines of like tag people in the comments and like the post and make sure you're following and you'll get entries. We might yeah. do like a tag. We've been doing a lot of like tag one person per comment. Maybe we'll just be like tag two people 
And I'm like, that's your entry. I'm like, well, we could try that out. Yeah, that sounds well, good. We'll have an announcement those, on Instagram. So if you are an it. Instagram follower, go there and you will see the instructions for the contest. But we're going to give away two of these books. Fizzband's Treasury of Dragons comes out on October 19th. And so that's the date that we're going to announce the two winners. Yeah, um, it'll probably be the alternate art, the alternate cover. Yeah. Um, that we'll give away. So um, it's they're both really cool looking, honestly. Um, I'm, I know I'm going to grab the alt cover. The alt cover is actually down a little bit. There it is. Oh, is that? Oh, wow. Yeah, it kind of looks like Game of Thrones. It does look very Game of Thrones. It looks cool. It doesn't look as cool as some of the other alt. I art, think it's going it to like pretty cool. based off of some of the stuff I've picked up. Like a lot of these art covers look way better in person. Like it shows up and I'm like, okay, this will be neat. And then I open, yeah. and I'm like, oh shit, it looks so fucking good. It is kind of gorgeous. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking at it like a, a lot like of a detail. Zoom, zoom in. So with that being said, I think we can call it a game. Yeah, um, follow us on the social. Call it a game. Yeah. Bye. Talk to you guys later. The Dungeon Cast.